Hey everyone, today I'm going to do a tutorial of how to build this alcohol stove, which is a basically a modified version of a DIY fancy feast stove, um, which is in my opinion the best alcohol stove that you can carry in your pack. Uh, if you want to know why I think it's the best, I've done a whole video about that on my channel and I'll put a link to that below. Uh, we won't cover that now. Just going to cover how to go about building this particular stove. As you can see, it's just a version of the Fancy Feast stove, but it's just a shorter version where the reservoir down here is a little chopped down. Um, just like the DIY Fancy Feast, the raw materials you're going to need are a cat food can of this size. This is a three ounce size, a tomato paste can, standard six ounce size tomato paste can, and some carbon felt. Um, which for anybody who doesn't know, you can buy this at Home Depot or Lowe's in the plumbing section. It's like a uh, flame protector for sweating pipe. So that's where you can find it if you're wondering. So just these three things and some basic tools and we'll get cracking here. Okay, first things first, you obviously want to remove all the labels and get all the adhesive off as best you can, clean them out uh, to get all the residual food out. Um, but then what you want to do is take your fancy feast can and what I do is I take a ruler like this and I've made a mark here. This lower one is 5 eighths of an inch and the upper one is 7 eighths of an inch. Now the upper one is less critical. Uh, the one on the bottom you can change if you want to but that's basically going to dictate the height of your felt and, and some basically your fuel capacity of your stove. So I'm using um, 5 eighths of an inch, 7 eighths for the top line there. And then on my tomato paste can from the top here where the can lid has been cut out, I've gone down 1 and 3 eighths for that. That again is up to you. You can make this inner piece here taller or shorter if you want. I try to go for something around um, 3 quarters of an inch or a little less uh, as far as how much this protrudes out. Um, if you go upwards of an inch, you can get a fast, The that's probably your optimal boil time, but I kind of like it being a little bit squatter. It just makes it a little bit more stable, but that's up to you. Anyway, now with those marked, uh, we want to do, we want to mark out a line all the way around, a nice flat line. I like to take a deck of cards like this with a marker, and then I can use the cards to kind of just dial in the height, and then I just come in here like this and spin the can to make my marks. I'll do that off screen and we'll be back. Okay, next step now that we've got our lines all marked out is we got to make our cuts. And uh, the way I like to do it, uh, it's pretty basic tools, but it makes it work. Uh, this is just my junky Swiss Army knife that sits out in my garage, so the knife is really dull. And I've also got a kind of junky pair of scissors from the garage. And what I do is I poke in between my lines there carefully. And then I just work the blade around, being careful. Don't cut yourself, of course. Just kind of prying the blade around like so. And you can see it'll leave a real ragged cut. And I'll do the same below the tomato paste can here. So I go in there with the Swiss Army knife and do like a rough cut. And then I can come in and use the scissors to clean it up. Even on the steel tomato paste can, a basic pair of scissors will do a great job and leave you with a nice clean cut. Okay, I finished up all the fine cuts. Here's my scrap peaches just to show you there. And so here's what we're left with, nice clean cuts on the fuel container, the base ring, and the pot stand inner piece itself. So now is a good time that you can kind of test fit your these two here and get an idea of your distance from the flames to the bottom of your pot and you know you can trim the steel can as needed. But the next thing that we're, we're going to do is we take the inner can here and we need to press press it into the base so that we end up with this right here. This can be a little bit tricky. Uh, this has a little bit of a rounded edge so it will help you out. What I find works best is just set it on a nice flat surface, try to get it as flat as possible, and then I like to take this inner can and use that to push down to give myself some even pressure. And I may even put a board or something on top of it. Um, another tip, just if you're having trouble with this, you can come in with some wax, like from a 
tea light candle or something and just rub some wax around here and use that as a little bit of a lubricant to uh, push it all together. So I'll come back when that's done. Uh, the camera angle I have is not really gonna work too well and it can be a little finicky, but trust me, it's really not too, he too hard to uh, get them to press together. Your main thing is you wanna get them to press together without uh, kinking or creasing any of the uh, canned components. So we'll be back when that's done. Okay, I think I just about got it finished here. Um, the main thing is you're pressing it in is you want to just go around and make sure that you're getting it all the way even. You don't, I mean, you'll pretty much, the farthest you can press it in is when you get up to this little lip where the lid was. You don't have to press it all the way in there, um, but I, I like to try to get it pretty close to that. But the main, uh, the main thing is just to make sure you get it pretty well even all the way around here. So I'm going to finish working on mine. I just wanted to kind of show you the process there of just kind of pushing it little by little as you go around. I didn't even need to use wax or anything on mine. It just took a little finessing, but it's going. Okay, the next step is to cut our piece of carbon felt. You want to go, um, this piece here I have already pre-trimmed and it's test fit. This is six and three quarters of an inch long. I recommend going seven inches and then just kind of uh, trimming it down to get it exact. The carbon felt can stretch a little bit. You see here, it looks like it's not gonna make it all the way around, but I can stretch it and kind of get it there. So start with seven inches and kind of trim it to there, but you just use a pair of scissors to cut your carbon felt. And then the width is gonna depend on however far you measured up from the can. Again, I did 5 eighths to start, so mine's 5 eighths of an inch wide. Um, but before we get it all fit together, there's a couple more steps to do that'll make our lives easier. Okay, two more steps before the final assembly. When we have our stove all fit together, when we pour fuel down in the middle here, we need a way for it to get out here into the whip. So you wanna cut a few notches around the bottom edge of your tomato paste can. I do four, I don't, I mean, there's no magic number, but just cut a couple and you can use a hole punch if you want it to look a little cleaner, but just a little notch to let the fuel through. The other thing is you wanna go around and punch a few holes um, somewhere up in this, you know, exposed area. I do it right below the rim just cause it's strongest there. I just use a, like a drywall screw just to poke little holes around here. You can obviously use a drill if you want it to look cleaner, but you want a few vent holes there. They're not fuel jets. They're just vent holes to make sure this inner chamber when a pot is on, it can't build up any uh, pressure. So that's what those are for. So once that's done, the next step is to just go ahead and kind of spin our carbon felt around here and fit it into the base. It can be a little finicky the first time you do it. Um, so, I don't know, it's nice to have like a pencil or something you can poke it down. I'll come back when I get it all done, but it just takes a little bit of finesse. Okay, I've pretty well got it worked all the way around there. It might be a little bit extra poking out there, but it's not going to hurt anything. If you have bits, if it's too wide, you can come in with a razor and trim it off if you want to. The main thing is you want to look inside and make sure that you can see the black carbon felt in all your fuel ports there with your can fully seated down. It's all good to go. So now there's only one more step to do and that's to light it up for the first time. Now this tomato paste can is gonna have a plastic liner in it. We wanna burn that off and just kinda of get rid of it. So I definitely recommend you give it a good amount of fuel, like a half ounce of fuel so it can get good and hot. Um, but don't put a pot on it, just take it outside and pour some fuel in and light it off to burn off that inner liner. Um, you definitely don't wanna do that inside or anything, but let's go fire it up. All right. Got it lit up there for the first time. You can see the flame will be really yellow because it's burning off, you know, some of that inner liner and things like that. You can actually see if you look close there, the liner starting to peel away on the top. So once you get all that all burned out of there, it'll uh, have a nice blue flame for you. But um, that'll basically be it. We'll just let it torch off until it's totally done. Maybe take a brush or something to brush out any of that residual liner if you need to. 
Okay, so it's burned off now and uh, got cool enough to the touch. You can see that liner pretty much completely separated except for a little bit at the bottom there. I'll just go in with like a wire bristle brush like this and clean that off, kind of clean off any other gunk, uh, some other adhesive or anything like that. But after that, it's basically good to go and ready to use. All right, so that's going to wrap it up. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that and found it useful. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, one last thing I want to give a shout out to where this idea came from. This is the original kind of shorty version that I made. If you go watch my stove video called the, the best alcohol stove out there, this is this short version I made. One of my viewers by the name of Martina de Jacquez suggested that if you flip this uh, outer ring around, it would just give the stove a little bit of a wider base and make it more stable. In this configuration, it's not really doing anything. Uh, and so I thought, yeah, that's a great idea. So that's how I made this version here, took her advice and flipped that ring around. And she was exactly right. It gives it a nice, that little extra couple millimeters makes actually quite a bit of difference to make it nice and stable. So I just wanted to give a shout out to Martina. Thanks for the idea for that. If anybody has any questions, let me know. Hope it was helpful. Thank you for watching.